Bristol, April 5, 1894. Captain Cook of the British steamer Mohican, having on board the crew of the bark Cade of St. John's, Newfoundland, furnishes the following particulars of the rescue. Captain Cook says that he sighted the Cade on March 20th, and seeing that the vessel was dismasted, he altered his course so as to run quite near to her in the hopes of being able to save some of her crew. When the distressed vessel was sighted, a terrible sea was running, and the wind was blowing almost with hurricane force. Owing to the severity of the heavy sea running, it was some time before the Mohican succeeded in lowering a boat and getting her afloat. Captain Cook caused a quantity of oil to be run out of the lee scuppers, and also placed a number of oil bags outside the gunwales of the lifeboat. In addition, he shipped a small cask of oil in the lifeboat, and eventually got her away from the ship. The lifeboat, after a long battle with seas, succeeded in getting to the windward of the Cape. When in that position, the cask of oil was broached and a quantity of its contents allowed to run to leeward of the lifeboat. This enabled the lifeboat to get close enough to admit of the rescue of the crew. When the Mohican's lifeboat returned to the steamer, she was received with cheers. Captain James of the Cape says that he left Trapani, Sicily on January 8th for St. John's, Newfoundland and passed Tarifa near Gibraltar, Spain on February 1st, shaping his course for Newfoundland. Soon after getting away from the Spanish coast, the Cape met with a series of gales which kept all hands on deck almost continually. So severe was the weather that several of the water casks broke loose and were stove in. This increased the sufferings of the crew. The severity of the weather also prevented fires being lighted in the galley, except at rare intervals, and the crew had to live almost entirely upon hardtack and a small quantity of canned provisions. On March 12th, the weather moderated, but the gales were succeeded by a dense fog. This caused the crew to almost give way to despair. Even the fog was not the last of their trouble, for while making fair headway through the fog, the weather suddenly became much colder. Suddenly, ice was reported ahead, and before the bark's course could be altered, it was seen that a huge ice flow was right ahead of her. The Kate crashed into the mass of floating ice, severely damaging her bow and smashing her stern. Luckily, a quantity of the ice had become jammed in the holes made forward by the bark's collision with the ice, and this enabled Captain James to make a spare sail fast over the damaged portion. Other repairs were also undertaken, but the bark began leaking badly. Night and day after that, the suffering men were kept at the pumps and succeeded in keeping the water pretty well under. During all this time, the Cape did not sight a sail, and at the expiration of two days when the fog began to lift, it was seen that the unlucky bark was in the midst of an ice field. With the lifting of the fog, the wind and sea began to rise, and for five days the cake was buffeted among the ice flows, every moment expecting to be sent to the bottom. Finally, after five days of terrible toil and struggle, the cake succeeded in clearing the ice field, but afterwards sighted a number of small icebergs, and the men were half frozen by a series of bitter snow squalls which swept over the bark, but the snow enabled them to obtain all the drinking water necessary to continue the struggle towards the shores of Newfoundland. These snow squalls continued until March 23rd when the weather changed for the worse and the wind blew with hurricane force. The foretop mast was carried away and in falling dragged the main top mast with it and the cake was soon a helpless, dismasted wreck. Sea after sea swept over the bark and all hands came to the conclusion that the Kate was doomed to go to the bottom, carrying all on board with her. On March 25th, a steamer was sighted on the horizon. The steamer turned out to be the Electro of the Wilson Line, and she answered to the distress signals hoisted by the Kate. The sea, however, was so high that the captain of the Wilson Liner was afraid to lower a boat, though he stood by the dismasted vessel until night. When morning broke, the Electro had vanished, and the crew of the Kate again gave way to bitter despair. Happily, the next day, when 62 days out, 
that Kate sighted another steamer, which turned out to be the Mohican, and the rescue of the crew of the Kate was effected. The wreck of the Kate was left floating, a dangerous derelict, and is believed to have been the vessel seen in an abandoned condition on the edge of the banks of Newfoundland by the British steamer Stockholm City, which arrived at Halifax on Sunday from London. The Mohicans' adventures weren't quite done, though. Ten years later, on August 1, 1904, the Mohican ran into a magnetic phosphoric cloud. The description of the event follows. The British steamer ship Mohican, while making for the Delaware breakwater, has encountered a strange phenomenon. A cloud of phosphoric appearance enveloped the vessel, magnetizing everything on board. Captain Urquhart says the vessel and crew had a fiery coating. When the sailors saw it, said the captain, they rushed along the deck in consternation. I looked at the needle and it was flying around like an electric fan. I ordered several of the crew to move some iron chains that were lying on the deck, thinking to distract their attention. The sailors could not budge the chains, although they did not weigh more than 75 pounds each. Everything was magnetized, and chains, bolts, spikes, and bars were as tight on the deck as if they had been riveted there. The cloud was so dense that it was impossible for the vessel to proceed. I could not see beyond the decks. It appeared as if the whole world was a mass of glowing fire. The sailors fell on the decks and prayed. Suddenly, the cloud began to lift. The phosphorescent glow on the ship and the crew began to fade. In a few minutes, the cloud passed over the vessel and we saw it moving off over the sea. This story was in the Providence News, April 5th, 1894 and the Morning Press, August 2nd, 1904. This is a Country Road production because history is fascinating.